Welcome to lesson five. We'll be reviewing aviation weather sources in this lesson. Now in aviation, weather service is a combined effort of the National Weather Service, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Department of Defense, and other aviation groups and individuals. And these reports and forecasts enable pilots to make informed decisions regarding weather and flight safety before and during flight. Automated weather sources such as the automated weather observing systems and the automated surface observing systems play a major role in the gathering of surface observation. Remote pilots are encouraged to obtain weather information prior to flight from flight services by using the website 1-800-WXBrief.com. Now while flight services does offer a telephone based service Telephone services are primarily intended for manned aircraft pilots only. Remote pilots are also encouraged to visit at aviationweather.gov and this is a free service that does not require registration and offers all of the weather products important to a remote pilot in command. Now convective significant meteorological information or SIGMETs are issued for severe thunderstorms with surface winds greater than 50 knots, hail at the surface greater than or equal to three quarter inch in diameter or tornadoes. They are also issued to provide pilots of embedded thunderstorms or lines of thunderstorms or thunderstorms with heavy or greater precipitation that affect 40% or more of a 3000 square mile or greater region. Now, a remote pilot will find these weather alerts very helpful for flight planning. As previously mentioned, the Automated Terminal Information Service, the ATIS, is a recording of the local weather conditions and other pertinent non-control information broadcast on a local frequency, and it's broadcasted in a looped pre-recorded format. It is normally updated once per hour, but it is updated more often when changing local weather conditions warrant. Important information is broadcast on ATIS, including weather, runways in use or not in use, specific air traffic control procedures, and any airport construction activity that could affect taxi planning. Now, the reason that's important for a remote pilot to be aware of that is if they are operating in a area near an airport, they would be aware or more aware of flight procedures and departures and landings in that specific area. Now, when an ATS is recorded, it is given a code and the code is changed with every ATIS update. So, for example, if you hear on your VHF radio, ATIS Alpha is replaced by then ATIS Bravo and the next hour it may become Charlie and so forth. There are three types of weather briefings the FAA wants a remote pilot to be aware of. The standard briefing is perhaps the most important and comprehensive. It provides the most current forecast weather conditions obtainable. The abbreviated weather briefing is used to obtain information to supplement other electronically acquired weather data or to update a previous briefing or when you only need one or two specific items. And an outlook briefing is used whenever the proposed time of a departure is six or more hours into the future. Now a standard briefing will provide the remote pilot with a complete weather overview for a planned flight. So here we're going to review the METAR weather reports. Now down below you see the graph that will be in your final exam and then also within your testing supplement and we've broken that down a little bit larger format for you up above and throughout the next few slides. Now, aviation weather reports are designed to give accurate depiction of current weather conditions. Now, METAR reports provide current weather information that is updated at different times, typically once every hour. Now, there's also a special METAR report known as a SPECI, and it can be issued at any time between routine METAR reports when significant changes to the weather have occurred. So a typical METAR report contains the following information in sequential order. Now first we have the type of report. The first notation denotes that this is a METAR report. Next we have what's called the station identifier or airport identifier. 
It's a four-letter code established by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, and in the 48 contiguous United States, a unique three-letter identifier is given to an airport preceded by the letter K. Now, in this example, we obviously see KJFK for JFK Airport in New York. Alaska and Hawaii have an additional identifier letter of P. So Hawaii would begin with the letters PH and Alaska with PA. Station identifiers can be found by searching various websites such as uh, NOAA's Aviation Weather Digital Data Services or even better 1-800-WX-BRIEF.COM. And incidentally, as of May 2018, the FAA discontinued the use of what was called the DUOT system and we just want to mention that in case you do see any reference to that on the internet, uh, that is no longer in use. So next we have the date and time of report. Now the first two digits are the current date. So the 1-6, the 16th would be the current date of that specific date in time. And it would be current. So whatever today would be for you, it would be that date. The last four digits are the time of the report, which will be given in Zulu time. And of course, Zulu time is synonymous with Greenwich Mean Time and Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. And pilots should practice converting Zulu time and adjusting for daylight savings time um, if applicable. We will be using Zulu time a lot. So in this example, we have 16th day, 2251 Zulu. Next we have wind reporting, which is typically reported with five digits followed by the KT indicating knots, unless wind gusts are involved. So the first three digits indicate the direction the true wind is blowing from in tens of degrees. So in this example, the wind is blowing from 160 degrees, which is a little bit south southwest. If the wind direction is variable, the report would show VRB squeezed in there. So it would be 160 VRB and then followed by the wind speed, seven knots. Now I wanna again reiterate, it shows you the true wind direction in 160 and not magnetic direction. So the last two digits again indicate the speed of the wind in knots. And in this example, the wind is blowing at seven knots. And again, if the winds are gusting, a letter G would be noted followed by the wind speed. So it would be 16007G18KT. Now, although it appears these alphanumeric characters are transposed, they are not. So I, we highlighted it here to further define for you. You can see wind 160 degrees. That's where the wind is blowing from 160 degrees and then seven knots and then the gusting is squeezed in between. And also if the wind direction varies from more than 60 degrees and the wind speed is greater than six knots, a separate group of numbers separated by a V would indicate the extremes of the wind directions. You may or may not see that uh, on the exam, but we just point that out again as you we'll have a lot of this information for you to print out and download and refer to at the end of these lessons. Next, we have what is called the modifier. Now, the modifier denotes that the METAR report came from an automated source. Now, if the notation auto is not listed in the report, then the report came from a human. It was generated by a person. Sometimes you may see the modifier COR in place of auto, and when that occurs, it identifies the report was corrected and was sent out to replace an earlier report that may be contained an error. So an example, it would be METAR, KJFK. You'd have the time and the date and then COR squeezed in between the date and the time and 10, what is the 10 statute miles. A modifier is not always present also, and sometimes it can be placed under the remark section, which is located at the far right end of this METAR report. And A01 would indicate no precipitation discriminator, or A02 would be with precipitation discriminator. Now those indicate the type of precipitation sensors employed at the automated station. And next we have visibility. 
Now, the prevailing visibility reported here is in uh, 10 statute miles, as denoted with the letters SM. Now, it's reported uh, in both miles and fractions of miles, and sometimes the runway visual range, which would be indicated as RVR, would be noted following the prevailing visibility. So this 10 SM could actually be 10 and a half statute miles. Now RVR is the distance a pilot can see down a runway in a moving aircraft. And when RVR is reported, it'll be shown with an R, then the runway number followed by a slant, forward slash, and then the visual range in feet. So example, if an RVR is reported as our runway 17 left 1400 feet that translates to a visual range of 1400 feet on runway 17 left now next we have weather and weather can be broken down into two different categories qualifiers and weather phenomenon now first the qualifiers of intensity proximity and the descriptor of the weather are given. The intensity may be light, which would be indicated by a minus sign, or, or moderate, which would be indicated by nothing, or heavy, which would be indicated by a plus sign. Proximity only depicts weather phenomenon that are in the airport vicinity. Now, not shown in this example, the notation VC would indicate a specific weather phenomenon is in the vicinity VC for vicinity of five to 10 miles from the airport. Descriptors are used to describe certain types of precipitation and obscurations. Now in the report of the sky and weather conditions, they're always reported in sequence of amount, height, and type of indefinite ceiling height or vertical visibility. Now in this example, we see few clouds at 5,500 feet, scattered at 19,000 feet and broken clouds at 26,000 feet. All of that pertains to the weather. Clouds above 12,000 feet are typically not detected or reported by an automated station and the types of clouds specifically towering cumulus which would be shown as TCU or cumulonimbus clouds uh, CB are reported with their height and contractions are often used to describe the amount of cloud coverage and obscuring phenomena. The amount of sky coverage is reported in eighths of the sky from horizon to horizon. So next we have the temperature and dew point. The air temperature and dew point are always given in Celsius degrees. Temperatures below zero Celsius are preceded by the letter M to indicate a minus. And so in this example, we have 26 degrees Celsius, dew point 13 degrees. Next, we have the altimeter setting as reported in inches of mercury in a four digit number group. So here we have 29.82 inches of mercury. Now, rising or falling pressure may also be denoted in the remarks section, such as pressure rising, P-R-E-S-R-R, -R, or pressure falling, P-R-E-S-F-R. And then lastly, we have the remarks section, which always begins with the letters R-M-K, short for remarks, and comments may or may not appear in this section of the METAR. Now, the information that's contained in this section may include wind data, variable visibility, beginning and ending times of a particular phenomenon, pressure information, other various information is deemed necessary. Now, in this example, the RA and then B25 following remarks equates to rain began at 25 minutes past the hour. Now, in relation to the reporting time shown, remember over to the left after the 16th day, 2251 Zulu. And this example, this would also mean that rain began at 2225 Zulu. So let's just further explain and review the METAR report in its entirety from left to right. And this will basically be how it's read. Routine METAR for JFK, 16th day of the month, 
2251 Zulu automated source wind 160 degrees at 07 knots visibility 10 statute miles few clouds at 5500 feet scattered clouds 19,000 feet ceiling broken or broken clouds at 26,000 feet temperature 26 degrees Celsius dew point 13 degrees Celsius barometric pressure 29.82 inches of mercury rain began at 25 minutes past the hour so here we will review the METAR report again and this graph once you see it all completed um, will be available for you to print out and refer to we feel this is a pretty handy graph to help you grasp how to define and read a METAR report so again first we have the station identifier which identifies the airport and again K signifies airport in the contiguous lower 48 United States JFK is the airport next we have the date and time of report 16th day at 22:51 Zulu time Greenwich Mean Time and that would equate for me at 6:51 p.m. Eastern Time regular time wind direction and velocity wind from 160 degrees at 7 knots basically saying it's blown from the southeast we have the modifier that tells us the report came from an automated source next we have the visibility 10 statute miles and, and it could be additional information in here for example it could have rain and haze also indicated in there and then next these three groups of alphanumeric characters tell us the sky conditions few clouds at 5500 scattered at 19,000 broken at 26,000 and next we have the temperature and dew point 26 degrees Celsius dew point 13 degrees altimeter setting inches of mercury 29.82 and then again we have our remarks so observed weather condition reports are often used in the creation of forecasts for the same area a variety of different forecast products are produced and designed to be used in the pre-flight planning stage and terminal aerodrome forecasts or TAFs are one of these reports that we will be reviewing now a TAF is a report established for a five mile radius around an airport however they can be extended out to 10 statute miles if the presence or fog or thunderstorms exist now each TAF is valid for a 24 or 30 hour time period and they're updated four times a day at 0 hundred Zulu 600 Zulu 1200 Zulu and 1800 Zulu now a TAF utilizes the same descriptors and abbreviations as used in the METAR report however TAFs are basically an educated guess that are produced by weather experts while METARs are a snapshot of the actual weather and again like METARs TAFs and information may be obtained by visiting aviationweather.gov and the forward slash to the TAF so a TAF includes the following information in sequential order and they can get a little tricky because they're forecasting but basically a TAF report includes the following information similar to a METAR so first you have the type of report and this is indicating a TAF report but it could be amended report if you see AMD after the TAF you have the station identifier again like the METAR this would be KMEM which is actually for Memphis then you have the date and time again similar to a METAR here we have the 12th day at 1720 Zulu time 
And next we have the valid period dates and times. Now a TAF valid period shown here of 1218 forward slash 1324 follows the date and time and will cover a 24 or 30 hour time period. So it's indicated that this is a 30 hour time period because we see the 18 and the 24. Now TAFs are issued four times a day again at 0, 0,000, 600, 1,200, and 1,800 Zulu. So the first two digits, the 12 and the 13, are the day the TAF begins and ends. So it begins on the 12th, ends on the 13th. The next two digits, the 18 and the 24, again, are the starting and ending hour of the forecast. So in this example, it tells us the forecast is from the 12th through the 13th, from 1800 Zulu to 2400 Zulu. And that is obviously a 30 hour forecast. If it was 24, it may say 18 to 18. A forecast period that begins at midnight, Zulu, is shown as 00. zero. And if the ending time is at midnight, like in this example, it's uh, annotated as 24. Next, we have forecast wind. Again, similar to a METAR report, we see 200, zero, 12 knots, where the first three digits indicate the direction the wind is blowing from, 200 degrees, and the last two digits indicate the wind speeds in knots. And then again, wind speeds greater than 99 knots would be given in three digits. And next we have the forecast visibility that's given in statute miles and it may be in whole numbers or fractions again. And so in this example, we actually see five statute miles, but followed by the letters HZ and that would indicate a forecast of haze. Now, what we have here is broken clouds again at 3,000 feet. And then we get into the forecast of significant weather. So we have similar to the METAR, but this is, again, remember, we're forecasting, we're predicting the weather. So where it gets a little tricky is what we have here is this is from 2000 Zulu time to 2200 Zulu time. So again, this is right in between the forecast time of 1800 Zulu to 2400 Zulu. There's a 40% probability of a visibility of one statute miles with thunderstorms and rain showers with an overcast of 8,000 feet with cumulonimbus clouds. So again, what we have here from 2000 Zulu to 2200 Zulu in between the 1800 to 2400, 40% probability, one statute mile visibility, thunderstorms with rain, overcast, 8,000 feet, cumulonimbus. So I just want to again go over the forecast sky condition at the end here. The overcast at 8,000 feet, the CB or cumulonimbus clouds, a TAF will only report cumulonimbus clouds. So now we have what's called the forecast change group. And for any significant weather change forecast to occur during the TAF time period, the expected conditions and time period are included in this group. So this information may be shown as a FM for from or a tempo for temporary. And the from is used or the FM is used when a rapid and significant change is expected, usually within the hour. And a tempo or temporary is for temporary fluctuations of weather expected to last less than one hour. So we have from 2200 Zulu time, winds are forecast to be 330 degrees, blowing from 330 degrees, 15 knots gusting to 20. Now we have a P in front of the six statute miles, which means visibility greater than, and I just remember that P as being perfect. So we're going to have really perfect, clear visibility greater than six statute miles. 
We have broken clouds at 1,500 feet, overcast at 2,500 feet. And then, like we just previously reviewed, from 2200 Zulu to 200 Zulu, there's a 40% probability, three statute miles visibility, with showers and rain. Now, I know this can be a lot of information and a little overwhelming, but we have these available for you to print out and download both the METAR and TAF with explanations how to read these and decipher these and after going over them two or three times they will become second nature to you and you'll actually begin to start memorizing the airport identifiers as well. So again the probability 30 a given percentage that describes the probability of thunderstorms and precipitation during the coming hours now, this forecast is not used for the first six hours of a 24-hour forecast, by the way. So here we're going to review a TAF and this example, and we're going to go through it step by step. We're going to have the explanation below. And this TAF is for KPIR, for Pierre South Dakota Airport. So it begins on the 11th day of the month at 11.30 Zulu time. That's valid for 24 hours because we can see it's valid from 1200 Zulu on the 11th to 1200 Zulu on the 12th. Wind from 160 degrees at 15 knots gusting to 25 visibility greater than six statute miles, scattered clouds at 4,000 feet, broken clouds at 25,000 feet. Now from 0, 0,100 Zulu on the 12th, winds from 140 degrees at 12 knots, Visibility greater than six statute miles. Broken clouds at 8,000 feet. Overcast at 15,000 feet. Now between, this is where it gets a little tricky again, we're jumping this probability between 0, 0,100 Zulu and 400 Zulu. There's a 30% probability the visibility will be three statute miles, thunderstorms and rain, broken at 3,000 feet with cumulonimbus clouds. And then from 400 Zulu on the 12th, winds from 140 degrees blowing from 140 degrees at eight knots, visibility greater than six statute miles, scattered clouds at 4,000 feet, overcast at 8,000 feet. And then we have a tempo, a temporarily, between 400 Zulu and 800 Zulu on the 12th still, visibility three statute miles, thunderstorms with rain showers, and clouds overcast at 3,000 feet with cumulonimbus clouds. And the equal sign at the end of the report just means that's the end of the report. And here we have some METAR and TAF weather abbreviations. Again, we'll have these for you to print out and download. You don't have to memorize all of them, but just through osmosis, you will come to become very familiar with many of these as you are learning the TAFs and METARs. So print out the example TAFs and the example METARs and, and these weather abbreviations. We've um, kind of highlighted some that may be more often used that we saw in the exams. Um, again, 
you'll become familiar with a lot of these over time. And then here's some descriptors, which, um, you know, describe showers, TS, thunderstorms that we just went over, uh, BR for mist under weather phenomena. And I remembered that by saying, let's call it baby rain. Drizzle, DZ, fog, FG. So again, print these out and you'll be reviewing them a little bit here and there as you're re again, re-reviewing the TAF and METAR reports. So on conclusion of that, I know that was a lot. I invite you to download and open the PDF um, to refer to for the following questions that we will be reviewing. And again, there's questions and answers you can answer on your own at the bottom of this lesson. Now in the remarks section of a METAR for Midway Airport, if you look at that graph, KMDW, what does RAB35 indicate? And we kind of just reviewed that. You may not even need a reference material. If you remember, that would be in the remarks section next to RMK. Rain began at 35 minutes past the hour is what that indicates. In a METAR report, what does BR indicate? I just gave you my little interpretation on how I remember that. Baby rain, it would be mist. And then on figure 12 of the graph of the, of the report, what does the wind direction and velocity at JFK, KJFK, what is the wind direction and velocity? So remember we said earlier, it will always be measured in true direction, not magnetic. So the giveaway answer is 180 degrees at four knots. And again, using the figure 12 between 1000 Zulu time and 1200 Zulu, what is the visibility at Memphis airport forecast? to be. So I'll give you a second or feel free to pause the video. The answer is the visibility at KMEM is three statute miles, three SM. TAFs are typically valid for what time period? I know you remember that. That's right. A 24 or 30 hour period. And again, in figure 12, what was the day and time the weather report was given at Winkler County Airport? Look next to K-I-N-K. -K. So remember next to K-I-N-K, -K, you have the day and time and the correct answer would be the 12th at 1845 Zulu. What is the valid period for the TAF at Memphis International Airport, KMEM? Now that may be a little more difficult. Feel free again to pause the video if you want to take a little moment to look for that answer. But the correct answer is 1800 Zulu to 2400 Zulu. What are the sustained winds at Winkler Airport? And I provided that graph here because I want to kind of just go over it for you. So we have, remember the date, the day, the 12th, the time 1845 Zulu, wind direction, winds blowing at 110, sustained winds. So the next is the wind section. And the correct answer is 12 knots. That would be the wind gusting to 18. And just incidentally, 15 statute mile vis visibility. 
What are the wind and sky conditions at Chicago Midway? MDW. Is uh, Specky? The wind and sky conditions. Again, remember after the station identifier, the airport identifier, we have date, time, wind direction, wind speed. We're looking at wind and sky conditions. So we know we're at 320 degrees, right? We know we're at five knots. And the correct answer would be wind from 320 degrees, five knots, visibility one and a half, statute miles, rain overcast at 700. And last group of sample questions. To obtain a complete weather overview for a planned flight, the remote pilot in command should obtain. Uh, remember, Outlook is in the future, abbreviated is short, and so the correct answer is standard. That's the most comprehensive. And that'll be the correct answer. Referring to figure 15, what is the forecast wind for K Memphis from 1600 Zulu until the end? of the forecast. You may need to pause the video here to look at that. The correct answer is variable in direction at six knots. VRB. And lastly, which weather service provides current recorded weather information? Is that a METAR, an ATIS, or a SPECI? And the correct answer is the ATIS, Automated Weather Reporting. Awesome job, we're done. Congratulations. You now understand how to read and interpret weather sources. Now, if you need to go back again and re-review any lessons, please do so. The lessons will always be here for you. The next lesson is a fairly simple and shorter lesson, so feel free to push forward if you want to. Otherwise, congrats, and we'll see you soon. Oh, 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 oh,